And welcome sports fans to today's round table and we've got a show for you starting to wrap up high school athletics here in the fall. We've got state championships taking place today up in Cape Girardeau in high school volleyball and we're going to get those matchups coming up uh, later on today. We'll go over those matchups as well as high school football a recap from Wednesday night in the district semifinals and we're headed to the district finals for all the classes come Monday night. Just in a few days, so we'll be looking forward to those matchups. We'll give you a recap from the semifinals and preview of those championship games taking place on Monday night. So stay tuned for that. And also, we're going to give you some uh, information regarding Southeast Missouri State college basketball. They played their uh, one of their preseason games the other night, defeated Waukegan State, and we've got a press conference with Dicky Nutt that we're going to show you to start to transition into basketball. And college basketball, of course, NBA is underway, but college will be getting underway as well as high school basketball. Probably about three to four weeks we'll be getting into high school basketball. And of course, we'll be covering quite a bit here on YHC and SeaballSportsZone.com. So be looking forward to that coming up soon. And also, we want to start off with a big win by the Pigott Mohawks Thursday night in their finale of the season over Corning. And the Rice Bowl, as they call it, between those two schools there in Clay County and Arkansas. And they won 33-26, to big win for the Pickett Mohawks. That game will replay uh, today at noon, uh, Saturday at noon. Also Sunday at 6 and Tuesday night at 6 as well. So look forward to those replays. Uh, the Pickett Mohawks defeated the Corning Bobcats this weekend. And we'll take a look at those matchups in high school football from Wednesday night, the district semifinals. So let's take a look at those matchups. And, and starting off in class one, it was Valley Catholic, uh, the ever talented Valley Catholic uh, team defeating Portageville 42 to nothing. And a tough goal for the Portageville Bulldogs. This is the second year in a row they face off against them. And last year was in the district championship, this time in the semifinals. And uh, Portageville season comes to an end against Valley Catholic. Valley Catholic moves on to the championship game as they will take on Thayer, who defeated Chaffee in that other semifinal game, 28-22. to And Chaffee's season comes to an end as well. They had a great year, and uh, they've been steadily progressing over the past few years and just come up a little short against Thayer uh, Wednesday night. So uh, fine seasons by both Portageville and Chaffee once again this year. And moving on to class two, it was Crothersville edging out St. Pius in that semifinal game 12 to six and a little, uh, probably not what you would expect there in that game. Crothersville defeating St. Pius by only six points. I think the elements were into play in that game. Crothersville always looked for that big play out of Daryl Monroe and also out of the passing game with Tyler Grissom and uh, probably just wasn't there. The elements Probably uh, less of the ability to get that big play. And also, Daryl Monroe isn't quite 100%, I don't believe. I think he was limited in, limited in that game. So they'll certainly need him to be 100% going forward uh, to make a run, uh, not only in district championship, but into state tournament play as well. That Crowsville moves on to the championship as they will take on Mullen, who had a big win over Scott City. 63 to, or excuse me, 62 to 16. Big win for Malden in that win over Scott City. And they advanced to take on Crothersville in that district championship come Monday night in Crothersville for that Class 2 District 1 title. So we'll be looking forward to that come Monday night. And in Class 3 District 1, uh, Park Hill Central, uh, sizable victory over Fredericktown, 53 to nothing. No problem for the Rebels. The Park Hill Central as they advance to the championship game as they will take on St. Genevieve, who defeated Potosi 39-21. It will be the Park Hill Central Rebels and the St. Genevieve Dragons Monday night at Park Hill Central. And uh, those teams have met early on, earlier on in the year, and it was Park Hill Central defeating St. Genevieve, so they got another shot. Uh, Adam, or St. Genevieve has another shot at Park Hill Central, and it will be at Park Hills this coming Monday night. And in Class 4, District 1, in that semifinal round, it was Hillsborough defeating North County, 42-19. Hillsborough will host uh, Cape Central, who defeated Festus, 56-20. Big win for the Cape Central Tigers. And it will be Hillsborough versus Cape Central in that championship game Monday night. 
Now in Class 5, District 1, Vianney got a big victory over Rockwood Summit, 26-7. And Vianney will take on Jackson, whom, whom defeated Poplar Bluff, 37-6 in that semifinal game. And these two teams will match up once again this season. Vianney already defeated Jackson in the first week or two of the season. So Jackson's got another shot at Vianney, at Vianney later on this year. So we'll be looking forward uh, to that game Monday night as well. So the championship games are set in high school football, and we're now in the round of 16. And after this round, the district championship games end Monday night. We'll enter to the state tournament play, and that'll be from the quarterfinal round. That'll be eight teams remaining in the state tournament after this coming Monday night. So we'll be looking forward to seeing how these championship games turn out this coming Monday night. And now let's transition to volleyball. The state championships are taking place this weekend. And round robin play took place yesterday up in Cape Girardeau. And taking a look at uh, those brackets uh, or state championship games that will be taking place today. We'll start out in class one. We had a team up there, Leopold, did very well. And as you can see, they advance on to the championship game that will take place uh, later on today, this Saturday afternoon. And actually that game will be uh, taking place at 4.30 later on today up there at the Show Me Center in Cape Girardeau as they take on, as they take on Winota. They take on Winota at 4.30 later on today. And the semifinal round, as you can see, are four teams, but they, they weren't necessarily, uh, just matched up against the teams in that bracket. Uh, Leopold uh, didn't necessarily t take on Santa Fe there in the semifinal round to advance. All four of those teams entered into round robin play, so they all played each other. And Leopold and Winold advance, and the other teams that are participating in the semifinals was Santa Fe and Osceola. So Santa Fe will take on Osceola in that third place game later on today. And also in the uh, class two bracket. Uh, we've got that here. Let's take a look at that. In class 2 it was St. Pius out of Festus and Herman advancing to the state championships. Uh, state championship later on the day at 3 o'clock up there in Cape and uh, St. Pius advanced over, or St. Pius and Herman advanced over Summit Christian and Fairgrove in that semifinal round. So uh, Herman always, they've been there quite a few times I think they won the state championship last year, if I'm not mistaken. They're in class two, but they're always there in the mix. Uh, there in Herman in high school volleyball. So we'll be looking forward to seeing how those uh, championships take place today in Cape Girardeau. And that will bring you into the volleyball season after today. And uh, yeah, a great location for high school volleyball, the state championships up there in Cape Girardeau. It's, uh, it's been there, I think, the past two years and will continue to be there not only this year but through next year as well. So a uh, great opportunity to see state championship volleyball right up the road in Cape Girardeau in our area and sure makes a better drive than Kansas City and that's where it was for years uh, before they switched to Cape Girardeau here and just a few years ago. I drive up to Kansas City especially on the teams participating and advancing. Pretty good haul. That's a pretty good haul up there a good seven to eight hours. Uh, drive from here in southeast Missouri, depending on uh, where you're driving from. But certainly a better drive up to Cape Girardeau than Kansas City. So it's been a nice advantage for our local girls participating up in Cape Girardeau there at the Show Me Center. Bernie was in the Class 1 state championship last year. Leopold right there in the mix once again this year uh, as they're going to compete for that Class 1 state title today. So maybe they can pull it out this year for a Southeast Missouri Class 1 team. And that's, they're the, pretty much only the Southeast Missouri team remaining. And the championship game today is Leopold. So we wish them the best of luck going after that state title. And we're going to take a break and be back with more coming up. I chose Three Rivers College. They helped me find the financial aid I needed. Classes are close to home. I'm experiencing the college life I want. With locations throughout Southeast Missouri and over 200 course offerings, including online courses, Three Rivers can help you earn a college or career technical degree. I chose Three Rivers College. You should, too. Enroll today. Learn more at trcc.edu or call 877-879-8722. 
Three Rivers College, success starts here. I want to stay connected to you. I like the way you do what you do. All right. Okay. You're fine. Ah. Hey. Ah. Call on a bell hearing center at 1-800-499-8786 or visit one of our locations in Dexter and Poplar Bluff, Missouri today. And now let's take a look at some college football games taking place today. And getting started with the Mizzou Tigers. They'll be on the road in the SEC taking on the Kentucky Wildcats. And a chance for them to get another SEC win. Uh, the 8th ranked Missouri Tigers. Also, uh, second ranked Florida State is on the road to take on Wake Forest in the ACC. Ninth ranked Auburn at Tennessee. Mississippi State at 15th ranked Texas A&M. BYU on the road to take on 24th ranked Wisconsin. Virginia Tech on the road in the ACC will take on 11th ranked Miami. 13th ranked LSU at top ranked Alabama. They're in the SEC. Big matchup between those two teams. Uh, they were just in the national championship game two years ago. So we'll be looking forward to that game later on tonight on CBS. And 23rd ranked Notre Dame at Pittsburgh. And those are the games to look forward to today. And our local teams Arkansas State is on the road at Louisiana Monroe, and SEMO will host Tennessee Tech later on today. So SEMO certainly need to win, and uh, Arkansas State uh, need to win as well. They're in the Sun Belt Conference, so we wish our local teams the best of luck later on today in college football. And take a look at the NFL games taking place today, or not today, but uh, over the weekend, tomorrow, and even Monday night. Uh, Seattle Seahawks are on the road to take on the Atlanta Falcons. And the Seattle Seahawks are one of the better teams in the league, especially in the AFC at 8-1. And, and the Falcons struggling at 2-6. and six. Uh, One of the teams you would look forward to making a run this year, but they, they've been bitten by the injury bug. And you probably don't need to expect much from the Atlanta Falcons this year to miss the playoffs. Also, the Detroit Lions at the Chicago Bears. Both of those teams 5-3. and three. The Philadelphia Eagles at the Green Bay Packers. And... It might be a game, might be a close game between those two teams. Aaron Rodgers, star quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, he's going to be out due to a broken collarbone he suffered in last week's game. So uh, Seneca Wallace is going to be stepping up for the Packers there in the pocket. And they're going to need him to step up in a big way for those Packers. Also, in other games, uh, the the St. Louis Rams at the Indianapolis Colts, the Cincinnati Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens there in the NFC North. And the Ravens certainly need a win. They're at 3-5 and five on the year, and they're uh, trailing the Cincinnati Bengals are 6-3. and three. So they're two and a half games up on the Ravens there in the, NF or in the AFC North. If any more champions certainly need to turn it around here in the last half of this season. The Carolina Panthers at the San Francisco 49ers. Panthers, one of those up-and-coming teams this year. They're 5-3 and three so far. It's the 49ers 6-2. and two. Also, the Texans at the Cardinals, the Broncos at the Chargers, they're in the AFC West, the Cowboys at the Saints, uh, Sunday Night Football on NBC, and the Miami Dolphins at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Monday Night Football, and what a circus it's been there in Miami, as they've had quite a bit of controversy this week due to Jonathan Martin, their start le left tackle has left the team. Uh, since earlier in the week, uh, due to alleged harassment by starting left guard right beside him there on the offensive line, Richie Incognito. And Incognito's had a past of uh, some dirty play on the field and uh, certainly some issues off the field as well, uh, certainly including this. And uh, it's, it's gotten to a point where uh, over a year and a half, Jonathan Martin allegedly taking some harassment. Not uh, in the locker room, but even outside of the field, even a 
pretty scathing and pretty rough voicemail that's been in the in the media. And uh, it just got to a point Jonathan Parton had enough, got boiled over and just left the team and now they got lawyers involved and there's you know, things being said on both sides, uh, some teammates coming out and support incognito, trying to, I guess, uh, keep the keep the, the locker room intact, uh, trying to keep the season together, but it's certainly not getting any better after a whole week now. So we'll see how it all plays out over the next few weeks uh, with those Miami Dolphins. Certainly a distraction for them. They're trying to contend for an AFC East, uh, at least contend in that division. They've got a pretty good team this year. Uh, I think they're at four and four on the year, right there at 500, trying to maybe at least secure those wild card birds. But well, it's certainly a distraction for those Miami Dolphins this week. So we'll see how it plays out over the next few weeks. And we're going to now show you that segment of the post game conference with head coach Dickie Nutt of the Southeast Missouri State boys basketball team, men's basketball team in college basketball, and they had a preseason victory over Waukesha State. So we want to get you just a. a just a touch of college basketball as Simo gets into their season. So let's take a look. You knew they had a good team. I mean, you got to give them credit. They battled back. Uh, oh, give them great credit. Yeah. I tell you, they're going to be good in their league. Yeah, I think and you know, will. you can tell they have some experienced players. They had, you know, we, we got we got up 24 points and. Uh, just got happy all of a sudden, and, and all of a sudden they hit a couple of shots, and, and now you. And, and, but I was really, I was really glad that we had some adversity hit us tonight. Um, we had foul trouble. Uh, Jerikus Bradley, AJ, uh, those guys really. We had we had foul trouble. Uh, we played through that. I think if uh, if it had been a regular game, we probably would have went to zone to offset our fouls a little bit. But I wanted them to fight through it without a timeout or without any kind of. Uh, I thought our guys did a really good job of handling themselves, composure. They kept their composure. They did a good job with that. Uh, but you got to give them a lot of credit, man. They execute and they make shots. And uh, but at the end of the day, we're glad to win the game because that's what it's all about. We want to win every time we play at home. And and I thought that uh, we had some good performances tonight. I thought, first of all, I thought we got out of the block very, very well. I think we hit our first 11 out of 12 shots to begin the game. I thought our intensity level was high. And then we dropped our guard. We got in foul trouble. We started getting a little bit of frustration in our, on our faces uh, about foul trouble. Um, maybe quick shots, uh, some of those things. Uh, but all in all, it was an improvement from last game. We played a better opponent, and now the real deal starts this week. What about, I don't know, Tyler kind of seems like he's in. Tyler played well, hit two really big shots late in the game, and, and uh, he battled some cramps tonight. Uh, but I thought he played big. I thought our big guys played big tonight. We were long. Um, we, we got our hands on a lot of deflections. Uh, we only had 13 steals, but that's a lot of steals for us. Um, but we had a lot of deflections. We had almost 11 deflections that we didn't get the steal. And so that, that helps us a little bit defensively. Uh, again, I thought we, we had some good stretches. Uh, we were able to move the lead to 24 points, and then we dropped everything that we were doing and, and just kind of wanted the game to be over with. And that was uh, So I thought it was good for our team to have some adversity and have some, some nervousness because we got a little bit tight. When things uh, didn't go exactly the way we wanted them to, it got a little bit tight. And Antonio's had another. He, he's, oh, he's, he's playing yeah. good, but yeah. I, like I told him, though, if you're going to be on the floor late in the game, you've got to be able to hit free throws. And you're a better free throw shooter than that. And that's a lack of concentration. Get yourself in the gym on your off time and shoot a thousand free throws a day. That's what he has to do. But I, I'm, I'm really impressed with him. I've, I've been very pleased with him. Um, really, really pleased with Jamal Calvin. I mentioned too. You know, he yeah. gives us a big, strong guard in there that, that did some good things. I thought CJ did good. There's three. There are three freshmen right there that did did pretty good. And I think if we can get Darren Gray back in there, um, he gives us that bigger, stronger guard, more experience a little bit. I think he can help us a little bit. And then if we can wait on uh, uh, Josh coming in in December, that will help us a little bit. I thought Nino played well today. I thought he was big. I thought his presence was felt out there today. Not only did he have, uh, I'm looking at his stat sheets now, but I think Nino Johnson had uh, 
he had uh, he had two blocks, but he had at least three or four more alterations. And you know, when you alter a shot, it's just as good as a block. Sometimes I thought he played well tonight. You know, I was uh, really pleased with him. The thing that Nino has to do two things: one, he's got to lose a little bit more weight, probably six to eight pounds. Number two, he's got to be a better uh, a better practice player. You got to practice better. You got to be a little bit better in practice, and I think uh, he's coming. But if he can give us that energy we had tonight, it gives us some size. I thought Jerikus Bradley got himself in foul trouble tonight, and he got frustrated. Um, I can tell the little bit of an inexperience that he had tonight. Um, he got frustrated. He got third, his third foul. He had to sit on the bench the last seven minutes of the first half. Then he gets his fourth one immediately. Then now he's trying to play with four fouls. He's just backing up, trying to be soft, let people. You know, he didn't want to get the fifth one. And now, next thing you know, he's not concentrating on, on things that he can do well. But I am proud of Jerikus. I think he's going to be a good player for us. I'm mean, getting out rebounded. I guess you don't like that. I'm sure getting out rebounded by that team. And uh, yeah, what, what were the final rebounds? Uh, 35-29. <clears throat> you know, that's uh, that's obviously uh, discouraging to us. But uh, but at the same time, I thought there was a stretch in the second half where we missed a we missed a ton of shots, and, and they did a good job of checking out and got the got the rebounds. And and uh, we, we just got to do a better job offensively rebounding the basketball. I, I think that uh, we're not paying attention to crashing the boards like we need to. We've got to get to the boards uh, offensively and get some uh, get some easy easy putbacks or second chances. What are your thoughts on going to St. Louis U Friday? That's a big challenge for you guys, isn't it, Coach? St. Louis, yeah, that's going to be a, a big challenge for us, but it's one that we look forward to. I mean, you know, you know, on our level, we have to play guaranteed games, and, and um, rightfully so. I perfectly understand that. We play generally two to three a year, um, but we always like to play regional teams. Um, we would much rather get on a bus and drive right down to St. Louis and play than getting on a plane and going out and play somebody like San Francisco. And so, so it's a good thing for us. I think our, uh, certainly our team is looking forward to that, and, and it's just going to be an eye awakening uh, for for, uh, for our team uh, to play in front of a crowd like that and play against a, a very very good defensive team. And you know we got our hands full, but we can't worry about that. We're we're excited about it, and we we'll look forward to playing. I know it's on state, I guess TVs around St. Louis and the region, so that's all good publicity for you guys. Oh, it's and great. It's so TV. Yeah. Um, again, it's all about recruiting. You're trying to put the best product you can out there, and you try to put a first-class program out there. And anytime you can play in the metro city, uh, around our city, and around our university, it, it it means a lot to our program. And, and St. Louis right now has a, an unbelievable class of uh, uh, ball players that that we're looking at, and so it's uh, hopefully we can go in and have a good showing, and, and we can we can uh, we we can uh, uh, be good with that. Well, their program's kind of on an upswing right now, coming off a great year, one of their greatest years, and they're expecting uh, to be very good. You know, yeah. they're, they're good. I, we had not spent any time. I think my assistants have already started to look at them, but uh, we'll we'll start tomorrow looking at them and see what they bring. But you know, the bottom line is, is we know they're good. Uh, you know they they have they've been very very good. They had a great year last year. They were top 20 at one time. I think now they're about 25th, maybe 30th, somewhere like that. I, we we know they're good. I'm, we're not worried about that right now. We're worried about our team and improving every day. And I hope that uh, we can continue to do that. And that's all we got to report for today's roundtable. We we're getting down to the end of the fall sports season. And as you can tell, the temperature dropping. That means we're going to be getting into basketball before you know it. So we'll be looking forward to that for boys and girls basketball coming up. And, of course, we'll be covering quite a bit ourselves here on YHC and SeawallSportsZone.com. So sort of stick, uh, still look forward to that over the next few weeks. And uh, next week's roundtable, we'll give you a recap of the Monday games that took place in the district championships as well as looking to state tournament play and high school football, and we'll be updating you on those uh, state championship games from Cape Girardeau later on today as well. So look forward to the remaining roundtables we got coming up. We'll have some guests on to talk about these football games as well as the volleyball games taking place, and we'll be getting into high school basketball here in just a few weeks. So we'll be looking forward to that as well. And until next week, next time, I'm Tyler Wagner. Have yourself a great week.